We present Sparse Inertial Poser, SIP, a fully automatic method for 3D human motion capture from a small set of inertial sensors attached to the body lens. SIP enables recording of arbitrary human motion in outdoor scenarios without the need of external cameras. Our result can be observed on the left, the original motion can be seen on the right. The video is shown only for reference and is not used by our method. SIP uses only six small sensors as input. Each sensor is an IMU, or inertial measurement unit, which measures 3D orientation and 3D acceleration. Since IMUs are small, they can easily be worn on the body and may eventually be embedded in clothing. IMUs enable the recording of human movement in natural, unconstrained scenarios. Existing approaches use 17 or more IMUs, which are intrusive for subjects and time-consuming to set up. To make mocap more widely available, we need simpler solutions. Other approaches combine IMUs with external video recording, traditional motion capture, or restrict the kinds of motions that are possible. These methods do not generalize to arbitrary motions. SIP uses only six IMUs attached to the wrists, lower legs, back, and head. These could easily be incorporated into regular apparel. But with only six IMUs, the estimation of full 3D body pose is highly under constrained. We make several contributions to address this, including using a realistic statistical 3D model of the human body and integrating acceleration information in our formulation. The orientation of six IMUs only weakly constrains the body pose. To illustrate that, for each frame, we show several possible pose configurations of the left hip and knee that produce the measured IMU orientation of the lower left leg. Observe that several poses satisfy the orientation constraints, making the problem ill-posed. Here we considered only two joints, the left hip and knee, but when all joints are considered, the problem is even more under constrained. Combining acceleration with orientation could ameliorate the problem, but naive integration of acceleration over time produces severe drift. We exploit two key ideas to estimate the human pose from incomplete measurements. First, we use a realistic statistical body model that constrains the range of motions. Specifically, we use the simple body model. Secondly, we optimize all pose parameters of a sequence at once. This allows us to resolve most of the ambiguities and allows us to integrate the acceleration information within the same optimization framework. The obtained result is shown in yellow. In the following, we show several results of SIP. On the left, one can see the reconstructed motion and on the right, one can see the reference video. In this result, the 3D body shape is obtained by fitting a simple body model to a laser scan of the person. Body shape can also be obtained without a scan. We refer to the paper for more details. Notice how the reconstructed motion appears accurate and realistic. Here we show a climbing sequence. Notice how SIP captures the subtle balancing movements of the subject. Notice our approach even reconstructs the global position of the body. Fast motions and complex poses are not a problem for the method. One of the keys to good performance is our joint optimization framework. In the following, we compare SIP to SOP, or Sparse Orientation Poser, which is a baseline that uses only the orientation data frame by frame. We performed a quantitative comparison on the TNT15 datasets. We refer to the paper for the numerical results. Observe the original video on the left, the reconstructed result using the baseline SOP in the middle, and the result using our method SIP on the right. Notice how SOP reconstructions are much less accurate. They match the orientation recordings, but fail to correctly estimate the pose for body parts that do not have an IMU attached. In contrast, SIP correctly estimates the rotation of the arms. Here we compare SOP versus SIP for the jumping a wall sequence. Again, SIP correctly estimates the full body pose, but SOP cannot deal with the ambiguities. For evaluation, we estimate the body pose using our method with 10 IMUs and treat this as ground truth. In the following, we compare the reconstruction using 10 IMUs versus the reconstruction of SIP using only 6 IMUs. We observe that for most of the sequences, the results with SIP are very similar to the ones obtained using 10 IMUs. This illustrates that there is sufficient information for a sparse set of IMUs to recover the full body pose. Notice that SIP can also track dynamic sequences with abrupt motions. SIP provides a step forward for minimally intrusive motion capture of arbitrary activities. However, it does have some limitations. As shown in this sequence, the hands and feet are not accurately tracked because no IMU constrains their motion. 
Furthermore, whereas the pose is very stable, the global translation still suffers from drift. To address this, we plan to integrate GPS measurements and constraints derived from the world geometry. In summary, SIP is the first method to estimate the full 3D pose of a human from a sparse set of IMUs. The six IMUs could easily be worn on the body and integrated with clothing. Consequently, SIP is a significant step forward towards the motion capture of unconstrained daily activities in the wild. SIP might also be useful for monitoring and diagnosis of pathologies. Observe how the limp of the subject is clearly visible in the 3D reconstruction. Techniques like SIP could be used to detect falls among the elderly, monitor patients recovering from injury, and might enable diagnosis of neurological disorders from changes in gait and movement. Thank you for watching.